You're here today in London. Welcome uh, to you. And uh, tell us a little bit about the visit. Well, we just thought it was so important for us to connect with a country that has so much in common with the U.S., common language, common culture, common values, and an uncommon friendship. And so we're here to say we want to see you get through this uh, Brexit period effectively, efficiently, and successfully so that we can have an enduring, successful relationship. Now, I'm going to come on to Brexit in a moment, but before we do that, tell us a little bit about what a small business administration does. We, we actually turned down the chance, I guess, in the last election to have one, but what are we missing? You know, for us in the United States, we see that we've had, for example, just recently, 72 months of consecutive job growth. Two-thirds of that growth has come from small businesses. Small businesses employ half of the private workforce, so we know that they're a growing part of our comeback story, mm -hmm. and we want to make sure that we're providing the optimal ecosystem for them. The SBA then comes in and provides the proper advisory services, the proper access to markets, whether they be domestic, government, corporate supply chain, or the international marketplace. And lastly, we provide the fuel, the, the capital, the requisite capital to be successful. Do you get a sense of how, how high up the pecking order small business is to your own administration in terms of just how important is it viewed as a sort of, I guess, super charger of the US economy? Well, that's, that's exactly right. Because it is such a fundamental uh, player in our economic story, it is important that we give them a seat at the table. And so President Barack Obama feels very important about that and supports him at every turn, from maker fairs at uh. the White House to writing for Wired magazine. Uh, we do what we can to lift up entrepreneurship around the country. Right. And what, tell us about the UK in terms of what you've observed. What have you found interesting? What, what are sort of the, the memories you'll take back home? Well, what I really enjoyed, and thank you so much today for hosting a really dynamic and fast-paced uh, workshop here today where we were able to take some lessons about the challenges of diversity that we're experiencing in our country, the challenges of including women in the workforce and in the disrupting space, which we're having in our country. So again, we're, we have the same challenges. And what we saw here is that some of, the, the, some of them can be addressed by understanding that if we want to be successful, companies and everybody performs better when there's diversity in the room. All the studies prove it out. Mm -hmm. We know that right now, VC capital, for example, in the United States is concentrated in three states, California, New York, and Massachusetts. And yet, we know that we have disruption and great ideas all across the country. So, as Warren Buffett says, the reason he's been so successful is because he only had to compete with half of our population. Right. <laughs> You have an opportunity to address that issue as well, and I think we ought to get on with it. Right. I mean, technology, obviously, has, has been the order of the day today. We've been discussing tech, right. and the U.S. is seen as such a spiritual home for so many tech businesses. If you were to look at why the U.S. has been so successful, why the West Coast is, if you like, the world's capital for tech in that respect, what, what do you think the magic is? Well, I'm from California, and I see it all around me, and it's very exciting to be from that state. And you know, and it is that proper clustering of you have people with chutzpah, mm. with that drive, with that you know sense of uh, I would say exceptionalism. You have capital. You have the research institutions. We have the ability to get things patented right away, and and then you have access to markets, one of the largest markets in the world, the U.S. government. And so I think that all of those combined really make for an ideal uh, uh, ecosystem. Right now, let, let's talk. Let's talk about Brexit. It was the, was the big issue today for us. Um, obviously, a lot of people have thought about the president making the point that Britain would go to the back of the queue. We want to get further back up that queue. What should we think about now in terms of American thinking, in terms of Britain and the potential of a post-Brexit world? Well, what we're hoping for is that you look at these trade agreements that we're, that we're advocating for. The TPP, of course, in the Western Hemisphere and the TTIP here in, in the European theatre. It is so important for us to have a vibrant system of trade. 95% uh, of the world's consumers are outside of the United States. We get that. And so for our businesses to continue to scale, they have to have access to you know, 95% of the market. And I would imagine that you feel the same. So now, instead of having a single uh, a trade agreement with the EU, I think that you're going to be challenged with kind of, you know, trying to come up with a whole series right. of agreements. Do, does the things change now in terms of U.S. perceptions of Britain as a partner? Now it's 
on the verge of being outside Brexit. I mean, what, what, is the, what is the use, if you will, of the UK to the US going forward? Yeah, I, you know, as a, you know, I can't speak for all Americans, but generally speaking, when I travel the country, what they say is they love the Brits. Americans love, I mean, in Los Angeles, my hometown, we have Brit Week. <laughs> Brit <you> Week. <laughs> Brit Week, where everybody wants to be British and we celebrate the Brits. And so it's a culture that we feel comfortable with. We speak the same language as we said, have the same values, have the same view of the world, standards. And so to that extent, our uncommon relationship will take us far. Right. And we want to continue to make sure that that, that, that makes sense for all of us. And so we know that you're critical players with us in NATO, you're an important democracy, you're a world leader, the relationship has got to be enduring. Now, you are down to your last days in post, along with a lot of other co colleagues in the White House administration. Give us a sense of how's it feeling? We're obviously on the, the build up to an election, what comes next, but how does it feel at the back end of an administration with presumably a lot of work still to do? You know, I look back on it with enormous pride. When we took office, when President Obama took office, our unemployment rate was double digit. We've now cut it down in half. We now have, as I just mentioned earlier, 72 months of consecutive job growth. We have our market cap values doubled in the in the you know, the stock exchange. The we just in the last quarter, if you annualize our GDP growth, you know, it comes out to about three and a half percent. So this is remarkable for mature populations. So I think that we feel satisfaction in terms of the accomplishments, but there's no question that there's still so much more to do. On a very personal level, I mean Will there be sadness, do you think? I mean, how, will it, how will it feel at the, sort of, the end of the party? The, sort of the, I mean, will there be a party? I mean, who knows how presidents sort of end their terms? I mean, that sense of finality when you've done two terms with you know, quite a campaigning president. Uh, for me, you know, I served as California Secretary of Transportation, and there is just this great sense of satisfaction to have come in, to create the impact that you hoped that you could make. And, uh, and then be done with it and move on to something else. You know, I like to think, look at things in five-year spurts. Yeah. I don't like to stay long because then it, it forces me to have a goal, metrics, time, action, and get it done. So when I look at the SBA, I look back and say, we are record lending. Never has the Small Business Administration put out more capital. We are record investments and we are at record contracting opportunities with the SME space. So I say job well done, look back, be proud, and move on to the next challenge. Well, before we finish on that, I want to just go right the way back because you are a definition of a high achiever in my mind as an, as an entrepreneur, as somebody that came to the States to make their lives there. Did it ever occur to you that you would be this embodiment of the American dream? Well, you know, I do like to say that when I was leaving our hometown in Mexico and I arrived as an immigrant, my grandmother would say, we are a family of immigrants, but someday if you work really hard in, in the U.S. and you work hard, and I think through entrepreneurship, you know, you can create the kind of life that you wish for, um, that someday I could work in an office and be a secretary. But little did she imagine that I would hold office and be a cabinet secretary. But that's the power yeah. of entrepreneurship that you can build a legacy, that you can build family wealth and provide for your family in a way that no one imagined. And that now I'm in a position where I can be a part of uh, President Barack Obama's public service mission. Right, and next sort of mission for you, you'll leave the White House at the end of the year. What will, what will the new mission be? What will the new chapter be in your life? I've been blessed to have been able to work in a large corporate setting where I learned processes and systems and how to optimize things. And then I started nonprofits, very successful nonprofits. I started businesses. The bank was my last uh, business that I started. And now I've seen the world through you know, the lens of the US government as a cabinet member. So I've got to find a way to put all that together to continue to serve, but serve in the private sector, to continue to build mobility and to deepen our democracies around the world. Sounds like there might be a startup in all of that somewhere. <laughs> Maria Contreras, sweet administrator of the Small Business Administration. Thank you, thank you for today. It's been a great pleasure meeting you. Thank you. Continued success to all that you're doing here for our entrepreneurs. Thank you so much. Thank you.